Well, hello, and welcome to Family Game Night Games. I'm Emily with Firefly Toys and Games, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. We're gonna take a look at Shadows in the Forest by Think Fun. This is a really cool game that you can play with anyone in your household, and you get to play it in the dark. Yes, that's right. Turn the lights down or turn them off, get you a candle or two if you need to, but this game is LED based and it is best played in the dark. So get your fort ready, go ahead and get your pajamas on, and let's dive into Shadows in the Forest. So Shadows in the Forest by Think Fun Games is a really fun game to play in the dark or as dark as you can get the room reasonably. Um, so let's dive right in and play Shadows in the Forest. So what we've done is we went ahead and set the game up. Uh, what you're going to have is you're going to have lots of trees or um, stone obstacles. And so you're going to lay them. They each have their own little hole across the board. So you're going to set them up and try to fit like um, this is a smaller one, stick it in a smaller space, larger in the larger space, etc. Um, so whether they feel in really nice in the forest. It is shadows in the forest, mind you. So we got to set our forest up. All right. So what we've done is we've um, put our lantern over here to the side. So what you're going to do to start with, uh, you're going to turn it on. And it is LED based, so it's really, really fun. Uh, but you can see it glows. So you're gonna set it up over here to the side and you're gonna choose one person to be the seeker or whoever walked in the forest last gets to be the seeker um, and takes charge of the lantern. Now he or she is going to close their eyes or walk away from the table. Everyone else, no matter how many people are playing, are going to play with anywhere from three to six shadowlings. And these are little shadowlings. I went ahead and set three of them up on the board, but you can play with more difficulty, adding one of each to make it more difficult. So if you play with all six, it's gonna take a while, but you can get the shadowlings back. All right. For the shadowlings, they have a special ability to where anytime light touches them, their mask lights up, meaning they're exposed. When that happens, the mask has to be removed. So what we've done is we've hit our shadowlings in areas that the light will not be touching, at least to start the game. Now let's get to playing the game. There is a die included, and I do recommend that you leave the die out and expose it to sunlight before playing, because it will glow in the dark. It's so much fun. Okay, so we're gonna roll the die. And that was a two, try not to move the obstacles. Uh, so you get to now choose for your lantern which direction you're going to go, um, and then the shadowlings will get to go. So let's go ahead and go back into the forest. Uh, so we're gonna go one and two spaces. Now is the fun part. Now's where you need it to be dark. We're gonna take the lantern's view and actually see if we can see any shadowlings from this view. I don't see any, do you? All right, now this is best done in the dark. Like I said, the little mask will just plop out of nowhere. Now it gets to be the fun part. The seeker is going to close their eyes and the shadowlings get to move for their turn. So here's how this works. Shadowling closes the eyes, the lantern stays, and everyone else who's a shadowling gets to move one of the shadowlings to another location. But here's something to watch out for. You need to watch how the light is being directed so that you don't cross over in front of the light because if you get touched by the light, then you get frozen. When that happens, your mask comes off and you stay in the exact place that the seeker found you, even if he or she wasn't looking. On the next round, if you're able to be touched by another shadowling in the same location, you get your mask back. But you gotta work so that they also don't get frozen by the light. So let's take and move our shadows around really quick. Okay, so now that we're done, we can see the shadowling over here, but the lantern cannot. 
So it's very important to watch those shadows as they shift across. All right, let's continue on. Now that the shadowlings have moved, it's the lantern's turn. You might be asking, what's the point of all this? We're just moving a lantern and moving the shadows. What's the point? Well, the goal of the game is for the seeker to find all the shadowlings and take their mask off, essentially freezing them. For the shadowlings, their goal is to get all together in the exact same location. So if they want to gather around this tree, as long as all of them are there, three, four, five, or six of them, then they've won the game. So they have to have their mask on so they can move in order to win the game. That's why it's so important to be able to watch where the light is headed. Stay in the shadows. All right, Lantern's gonna go ahead and go again. And our seeker rolled another two. So let's go ahead and go deeper into the forest. So we're gonna move one and two locations. You're gonna continue doing this revealing shadows, casting light, getting together and putting masks back on until one of those two things happen. Either all the shadowlings get together or the lantern reveals them all. So let's go ahead and let the shadowlings move. But for this time, I'm gonna show you from the lantern's view what it looks like. So, one thing to note, the shadowlings are able to stay in the exact same location if you either feel threatened by leaving or if you would like to use that as a central ground for trying to get your shadowlings together. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll again for the seeker. Ooh, a four. Now it gets to really travel. You ready? So let's go one, two, three, and four. Uh-oh, I think we have a problem. All right, so we have two shadowlings that are hidden quite well. However, as you can see, right over there in the corner, we have a shadowling that's available. Now, their mask is turned in, but if we turn our mask around, we can see our little shadowling. So, our poor little shadowling has been found. So, here's what happens. We take the mask off. He looks kind of creepy. So, now we're going to put him back exactly where we found him. And we get to keep the mask. If the seeker collects all the masks of the shadowlings before the game ends, then we win the game. However, the shadowlings are going to try to work toward that shadowling and get their mask back on so that they can win. So that is Shadows in the Forest. Now, depending on the difficulty level that you provide for your family, and the complicated nature of trying to move them around the board and make sure that everyone communicates efficiently. It could take a little while to reach the conclusion, but you'll get there eventually. And to be honest, what's more fun than playing in the dark? Get your copy of Shadows in the Forest and play with your family for your next family game night. I hope that you all have enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you guys again very soon. Bye.